All right, so we're gonna build on what we talked about yesterday with finding asymptotes and holes from an equation, and then we're gonna use that to graph rational functions. So as you can see, we have a rational function here. Now, we have the graph to check our work, so we're gonna use that to verify our step as we go, but our goal is to be able to find all those pieces, so vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, and the any possible holes, uh, in without using the graph, but then using the graph to check our work, okay? So we're gonna follow the steps that we talked about yesterday, and um, at each stage we'll check to make sure we did it correctly, okay? So the first thing we wanna do, first step was to factor, right? So if this is our equation, we're going to factor the numerator, factor the denominator, and see if anything cancels. So I'm looking at the numerator, I notice that there's a GCF in everything, right? So I'm gonna, I see an X in all three terms, so I'm gonna pull an X out. It gives me X squared plus X minus 12 on the top. And then I look at the bottom and I notice there's a negative X and then an X in everything else. Now, anytime there's a negative, you wanna pull that out because it doesn't work well with the magic X that we're gonna eventually do. So I'm going to divide everything by negative x here. I pull out a negative x. That gives me x squared. This becomes negative x, and this is minus six. Okay, because everything got divided by both x and a negative. All right, so I've begun to factor. Sometimes factoring takes a few steps. These both now can be magic x on the inside, meaning you can turn them into two binomials. So we're gonna to continue to factor here. On the top, uh, this x squared plus x minus 12, if you need to magic x that over to the side to, to find the two numbers that work, you can. I'm going to proceed um, with the result. Um, so, Though I'm not showing the work right now, if you need to do that, go for it. This will, of course, turn into two binomials, right? And it will be x plus 4, x minus 3, right? Those two, num those two numbers add to give you 1, multiply to give you negative 12, okay? On the bottom, I still have that negative x right here. And this would be x plus 2, x minus 3. Okay, those two numbers add to give you negative one, multiply to give you negative six. Okay, so now, once I fully factored the top and the bottom, I see what cancels. Anything that shows up on the top and the bottom cancels. So x and x, that cancels. x minus three, x minus three, that cancels. And one more step here, see what's left. So on the top, I have x plus four, and on the bottom, I have negative, don't forget about that, and then x plus 2, okay? All right, so that is our factored simplified form, and we end up moving forward to the next step. The next step is to start finding those pieces, right? The next thing we talked about finding um, was our vertical asymptote, okay? So our vertical asymptote, remember, that occurs with any undefined values that are left in our, in our simplified form. So anything that will still cause a problem, anything that's gonna make you divide by zero. So I look and I say, okay, this bottom cannot be zero, right? I can't have that be zero. So negative x plus two cannot be zero, right? Because then I'm dividing by zero. You can't divide by zero. So then I look at this and I say, okay, well, what would make this zero? Well, a negative two would make this zero, right? A negative two would be negative two plus two, that's zero, and then it would equal zero. So I know that x cannot equal negative two, and therefore I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two, okay? So I go over and let me check, see if I did that correctly. So I look over on the graph, and I see if there's a vertical asymptote at negative 2, and there indeed is. So I know that I did that correctly, okay? Now the next thing we're going to look for is the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, 
That is what we, we go back to that original equation before we factored it. And we take a look and we say, okay, I'm just worried about this first term in the top and the bottom. And I ask myself, same degree or is one higher, that, that bigger than the other, right? And these turn out to both be to the third. So that means they're the same degree. When they're the same degree, our horizontal asymptote is just their coefficients, the ratio of their coefficients. So what does that mean? That means it's y equals, and then the coefficient of the top is 1. The coefficient of the bottom is negative 1. 1 over negative 1, well, that's a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 1. Okay, so that means I have a line going across at y equals negative 1. Let me see if that's true. Okay, I look over at the graph, go down to negative 1, and there is indeed a horizontal asymptote there. Okay, now what I do next is look for my holes. Okay, there are two boxes here because there's going to end up being two holes. I'm cheating a little bit to look ahead, but... Um, how would I know that there's going to be two holes? Well, two things cancel, right? Your holes occur at the undefined values that cancel out. So that and that, right? Now, why do we have holes there? Well, because they still were part of the function. So think about it. Here, if x is 0, right? We'll go back to the original. 0 th to the third, minus 0 to the third, plus 0 squared, plus 6 times 0. That would have made the original equation undefined, right? Yeah, sure, we got rid of it and canceled it out, but this was the problem we were given, so we still have to account for it, right? Even though we canceled it out, and it's going to behave differently because it cancels out. It's not an asymptote, it just becomes a whole, all right? So the first thing we have is we know that same deal as what we did with the vertical asymptote. We know that negative x cannot equal 0. Right? We also know that x minus 3 cannot equal 0. That would cause problems, right? So we work with both of those, okay? If negative x cannot equal 0, well then x cannot equal 0, right? Which means we have a hole when x equals 0, okay? Now a hole, right? A hole is a point. So when you find holes, you need an x and a y. We know the hole is at 0. We don't know the y of that. So we plug it into that simplified form. We don't need to worry about this first big form. We can use this one, right? So x plus 4 over negative x plus 2. So our y for this hole will be 0 plus 4 over negative 0 plus 2. Right? Just plug in that 0. We get y equals 4 over negative 2 or negative 2. So there should be a hole at 0, negative 2. Okay? We go over to the graph and we go to 0, negative 2. I do indeed see a hole there. Okay? Now, our other hole was here. Remember, we said that. This x minus 3 that we canceled, well, it still has to be accounted for. That still can't be 0. It would still cause a problem. Okay? So that means if x minus 3 cannot equal 0, well, that means x cannot equal 3. Because 3 minus 3 would be 0. Okay? That means we have a hole. A hole when x equals 3, right? Because it can equal 3, so we have a hole there. And our hole has an x and a y, so it'll be 3 something, okay? How do we find that something? Same thing we just did before. We plug it in to the simplified form, x plus 4 over negative x plus 2. So our y will be 3 plus 4 over negative 3 plus 2 which turns out to be 7 over negative 5, so negative 7 fifths, right? So a little more than negative 1, like negative 1 and 2 fifths, 
So we'll do a little just estimating here. Three is here, and then there's negative one and a little bit more, and that looks right. So we know we have our whole, okay? So those are the three pieces that we talked about last class, finding the vertical, finding the horizontal, finding the holes, right? But we're gonna add some pieces here, some new features, right? And we're just gonna grab these from the graph, so, um, and then prove that they're true, okay? So x-intercepts, obviously knowing them would be helpful. What makes something an x-intercept? Well, x-intercepts happen when y is zero, right? So let's just cheat a little bit here. This is a y of zero, right? Right on the line. And it's at negative four, zero. So we're, we're stealing this from the graph. We know our x-intercept is at negative four, zero. All right, but let's say, going forward, we don't wanna have to steal it from a graph. Well, what makes it the y-intercept? It's that zero for y. So what we need to do, if we wanna find this algebraically, right, is just make zero, I mean, make y zero, right? So to find, make y equals zero, okay? So note, remember we had y equals x plus four over negative x plus two. So that becomes zero equals x plus four over negative x plus two. Now, you're not gonna solve this by multiplying both sides or anything like that. You're gonna think this through. The denominator, we, we've already talked about the scenario where that's zero. If that turned into zero, we'd have undefined. That's not what's gonna make this equal to zero. The only thing that can make this equal to zero is the numerator. This is the only thing that can actually turn this side of the equation into zero. So all that matters is the numerator. So know how this became this? Well, now this, we can say, we'll just turn it into this. zero equals x plus four. Because that's what could turn this into zero if the top was zero. So if the top's the only thing that matters, that's the only thing we need to see. When would it be zero? When would x plus four be zero? Because that would turn the whole thing into zero. And now we have a simple equation where I would just minus four on both sides, and I would get x equals negative four, right? Remember, we set y to zero. So we know y equals zero, so we have a po point of negative four, zero. That is our x-intercept, okay? So that's how you find an x-intercept. You're worried about that numerator, okay? Set y equal to zero, worry about the numerator. So if we were finding the, if we found the x-intercept by setting y equal to zero, why do you think you find the y-intercept? You would set x equal to zero. Now for, we're gonna cheat a little, right? because we can. Now, wait a minute, there's a hole there, right? There's a hole there. So we've actually already found it, right? But that's not always gonna be the case. But still, let's go through the process, right? And kind of just prove that we found it. So for the y-intercept, you set x equal to zero. Here, I'll add a because that's what always, that's where the y-intercept always occurs, right? So we say, okay, y equals x plus four over negative x plus two, right? And we plug in x for zero, right? So this becomes y equals zero plus four over negative zero plus two. This should look familiar. We did this when we found our hole, right? which is four over negative two, which is negative two. So the y-intercept would have been key point there, would have been 
0, negative 2. However, we did find that we had a hole there earlier. That's why you want to find your holes first. So that way you know when you find this, oh, I actually don't have a point there. I had a hole there. Okay? Um, so, but that's your process of finding your y-intercept. So you're going to set x equal to 0 for the y-intercept, and you're going to set y equal to 0 for the x-intercept. Right? Those are your, your other two pieces. Okay? So that's what we talked about last class, right? But there was also, well, no. That, so that's what we talked about last class. But we also talked about how we're going to graph more. We're going to continue to practice this. And that's all we're going to do today is continue this. Because it's a lot. It's, there's a lot of steps here. So what we're going to do now is kind of similar to the warm-up, honestly, is we have an equation. We have a graph. We'll use that as our answer key. And we're going to practice finding the different pieces, OK? Um, now, you'll notice that each one of these gives you a little hint of when to find it, right? If I'm going to find my horizontal asymptotes, that's the unsimplified form. That's before we, uh, re we cancel anything or factor anything. That's when you find those horizontal asymptotes, by looking at that first term on the top and the bottom. Our factored form, right, that's when we we factor everything, we cancel out. That's when we find our holes, our vertical asymptotes, right? Our simplified form that we found, right, after we did all that, we use that for our x-intercepts, we use that for our y-intercepts. It's just easier to plug in those zeros into that easier simplified form, and it works. So why go back to the original form if you can use the easier form, OK? Now, we're going to use this as our kind of answer key. So let's take a look, practice pulling stuff from a graph here. OK, I notice right away that there is a horizontal asymptote. Of y equals 0. I also notice that there is a vertical asymptote. of x equals negative 1, right? And let's see, there is a hole right there. And it is at 1, 2. So there is a hole at 1, 2. OK, so we can use that to check our work as we go, OK? Um, again, this will be kind of similar to the warm-up. It's just kind of in a graphic organizer style um, structure to help you. If you fill this out really well, you can have this in front of you as you do other problems, okay? All right, so let's just go top left. It doesn't actually matter the order in which you do these. To an extent, you do need to factor to do some of it. But if you like to get the horizontal before you start factoring, you can. If you like to factor first and just circle back for the horizontal uh, in that unsimplified form, you can. It's fine. All right, so our equation is y equals 4x minus 4 over x squared minus 1. OK, so unsimplified, I'm not going to change this to find my horizontal asymptote. I'm looking right at this form. I'm not going to factor. I'm not going to do anything like that. Because to find your horizontal asymptote, you just look at the first term of the numerator and the denominator, and you compare the degrees. Now, this has a degree of 1. This has a degree of 2. Remember, we said that this is what's called bottom heavy. And because of that, as this approaches infinity, this bottom is going to grow much faster than the top. And you're going to divide by a bigger and bigger and bigger number, making your, your result smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So anytime this is the case, as you approach infinity, your asymptote, so your horizontal asymptote, will be y equals 0. OK? Because you're just going to keep dividing by a bigger number. Well, that means you're going to get closer and closer to 0. And that is indeed the case. That is our horizontal asymptote. OK? Um, if these degrees were the same, right, you would then do the coefficients. But they're not. You've got to be careful there. If this was x squared over x squared, sure, it would be 4, it would be 1, 4 over 1, right? But it's not. You've got to look at the degrees first, OK? 
Um, all right, so that's our horizontal asymptote. Um, now we factor to do our uh, holes in vertical asymptotes, right? So I start with y equals, it was 4x minus 4 over x squared minus 1. And I'll zoom in here. All right, on the, I look at the top and the bottom one at a time. On the top, I see, oh, 4 goes into both. So that's 4 times x minus 1. Now, anytime you, you do the top, right, you get a little clue. <laughs> x minus 1, like we know things are going to cancel a lot. So maybe x minus 1 is going to be in the mix downstairs too, right? So you kind of want to have that in the back of your mind. And then when, if you did, you see x squared minus 1, and you'd be like, what does that have to do with x minus 1? Oh, that's a difference of perfect squares, right? It kind of pushes you in the right direction, right? Because this is a difference of perfect squares. And actually, it's one we don't always recognize because 1 is a kind of a funny perfect square. So this is a difference of perfect squares, right? Perfect square, perfect square, difference. So this becomes x minus 1, x plus 1, right? Get, if you don't remember, know how I got that, you got to review your difference of perfect squares, OK? Um, OK, so we continue on this process, and we notice that there's an x minus 1 on the top and the bottom. So this becomes 4 over x plus 1. Okay, now we are fully factored. We're ready to start looking for the holes and the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so vertical asymptotes we always find by looking at what's remaining, right? So in a remaining piece, what would cause a problem, right? What would make this undefined? Well, we know the, the only thing that we've talked about that makes things undefined is when the bottom of a fraction is zero, because you can't divide by zero. So I think to myself, well, what would make this zero, right? And maybe you look at that and you go, well, negative one would make that zero. Maybe you need to write it out. Maybe you need to say to yourself, all I know is that x, x plus one as a whole cannot equal zero. Like that is the truth that I know, right? Now let me look at that and see what would make that true. Okay, well, negative one on both sides, right? That means that x cannot equal negative 1, right? You're solving even though you have a not equal sign, right? Okay, so if x cannot equal negative 1, that means there's going to be a gap in the function right at that spot, and those gaps show up as asymptotes. So there's a vertical asymptote of x equals negative 1, right? And we go to our... If we go to our answer key, I do see that we had a vertical asymptote of x equals negative 1, okay? Now our holes occur where things canceled, right? This, what's left, was about the vertical asymptote. What canceled is about the hole, right? So it's a similar process. I look at this and I say, okay, this canceled and it was x minus 1. That also cannot be 0, right? It canceled, so it'll show up as a hole, but I still got to account for it. So I say, OK, that means x, x minus 1 cannot be 0. Same process. You could look at it and say, well, I know it's 1, because 1 minus 1 is 0, and it can't be 0, so that must be the thing. Or you could write it out like this. And you can say, OK, uh, let me solve. Even though this is a not equal sign, I can still solve it. And I find out that x cannot equal 1. OK, so you got to remember, with a hole, it's a point. It's like a point that isn't there. So I need an x and a y value, right? I've found the x value. It's going to be 1 something, right? I have to fill in this part. Find uh, a y when you're given an x. We know we plug in. So what do I plug into? Well, I don't need to plug into the original equation. I have a much easier one right here. Plug into that. So I say, OK, that means y will be 4 over 1 plus 1, or 4 over 2, or 2, right? So my whole is at 1, 2, OK? So I go and I see, oh, that is where I had my whole. So I have that correct, OK? Now, we haven't talked about our x-intercepts yet, our x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Now, our x-intercepts 
Interesting. I don't see any. Wait a minute. That's because we had a line at y equals 0 that you couldn't cross. So that's going to happen. If you have an asymptote on the x-axis, how could you cross it? Right? So there are none. And we'll see how that shows up algebraically in a second. Our y-intercept is right here. So that looks like our y-intercept will be 0, 4. We'll see if we can figure that out algebraically. OK? Check that out. OK, let's talk about our x-intercepts. Now, we said our x-intercepts occur right, when y is 0. So we set y equal to 0. And this is new today. OK? So in a way. OK, so they happen when y is 0. So we're going to set it equal to 0. So remember, our equation was that we simplified to was y equals 4 over x plus 1. So this becomes, well, if y is going to be 0, it's going to become 0 equals 4 over x plus 1. OK, remember we said we think this through, right? And the numerator is the only thing that can make this 0, right? We want to figure out how to make this right side 0 so this thing equals. Well, the bottom's not going to make that happen, because if the bottom was 0, we'd have undefined. That would be a problem. So it's always the top that would make that true. But what do we see as the top? It's just a 4. So if you just have a 4, well, can 4 ever be 0? Could that ever make this 0? Remember, we, say, we, we, we actually took this a step further, and we said, we just care about the numerator, right? So we said 0 equals 4, and we just kind of get rid of the, num the denominator, right? We just kind of get rid of that and become 0 equals 4. But 0 can equal 4. It doesn't equal 4. 0 can never equal 4, right? So this is telling us something. It's telling us this is impossible. Not true. Impossible. Impossible. And that means there are none. There are no x-intercepts. Right? Because our math showed us that wasn't possible. And if we go back to our graph, that was the case. We had no x-intercepts. Right? And you also could have predicted that based on the fact that we already found a, hor a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So you knew that nothing was going to cross that x-axis. OK? All right. Um, now, our y-intercept, well, if for the x-intercept we set y to 0, for the x-intercept, I'm sorry, for the y-intercept, we set x to 0. So set x equal to 0. OK? So remember, our equation was y equals 4 over x plus 1. Now I'm going to plug in 0 for x. And I get y equals 4 over 0 plus 1, right? which is 4 over 1, which is 4. right? So that means we have a y-intercept. I mean, think about what we just found out. When x is 0, y is 4. Well, when x is 0, you have a y-intercept. So we have a y-intercept at 0, 4. And that checks out. OK? So that is the whole process, right? And if you take some good notes, and you can even add some of the stuff that I said I didn't write myself, if you want to really uh, add to these notes and get some good notes so you can use on problems, think of this as like a graphic organizer. I know we're early in the unit, but we've already thrown a lot at you. So uh, you want to make sure that it's kind of all on one page. You're not flipping through too many notes, OK? All right, so there you go.